Hello everybody, Hooded Cobra Commander 788 here. It's time again for Class of Fridays. We are looking at this G.I. Joe Classified Series action figure sent to me by Ryan Sweeney. Thank you very much, Ryan. This is Snake Eyes and Timber Alpha Commandos. It combines the look of the first version of Snake Eyes with the wolf that came with the second version of Snake Eyes. Let's start by looking at the packaging. It has a window so you can clearly see the action figure, the accessories, and the wolf. The wolf has an alternate head. We will try that out later. This is in the G.I. Joe Classified series, and we have some character artwork on the front. That artwork continues to the side, where we have more artwork of Snake Eyes with his Uzi, surrounded by a snake, I guess. I think you're taking his codename a little too literally. And the wolf. The G.I. Joe Classified series uses a different artist for each box, and while that does give us a variety of art styles, it does not give us a consistent style for the series, which I think it needs. The artwork that is most consistent for the Classified series is the generic poster art on the back of the boxes. It looks really nice and it has some vehicles that we will never get in this scale. This is number 30 in the series. On this side of the box there are symbols that represent his specialties. This one means he is a pirate. This is a cheese grater. This means he is blind in one eye because he's a pirate. And this is a Rorschach test. Can you see the butterfly? Let's take Snake Eyes and Timber out of the box and check them out. Here is Snake Eyes and Timber outside of the packaging with all of the accessories, and both man and wolf are very impressive. Right off the bat, I can see the figure cannot hold all of his accessories, which is just a recipe for losing something. Yes, it is nice to get extras, but if the action figure cannot hold the extras, they have to either be left in the packaging, perhaps to be forgotten forever, or dropped on the carpet to be vacuumed up. Let's stand this Snake Eyes next to the vintage action figure it most closely approximates the first version of Snake Eyes from 1982 when he was G.I. Joe's commando before he was given his ninja backstory. Like the vintage action figure, the classified Snake Eyes is all black, or mostly black. There is minimal paint on the classified figure. He includes an Uzi submachine gun and his mask has goggles. That is in contrast with the version 2 Snake Eyes from 1985. That mask had a visor. Let's line up this Alpha Commando Snake Eyes with other classified Snake Eyes figures we have the standard retail release, we have the deluxe snake eyes, and we have the movie snake eyes. These figures are all pretty similar. They all look like snake eyes. The movie figure is probably the most unique in that I don't see any reused parts. These two are basically the same figure with different colors. Let's take a look at the accessories for Alpha Commando snake eyes. He came with quite a few, perhaps too many. He has a black submachine gun, looks a little like a modified MP5, and it has a removable magazine. Magazine. He has what may be a larger caliber assault rifle in black plastic. No removable magazine here. He has a submachine gun that is an update of his classic Uzi, the accessory that came with the original action figure. Really nice update that is also in black plastic. It also appears to be the same Uzi that came with the deluxe snake eyes. He has a couple accessories that can be stored on the figure. On his left leg, he has a sheath for a Bowie knife. It fits very tightly. This Bowie knife has a painted dark metal blade, a serrated blade. On his right side, he has a holster for a pistol that is removable. He also has a slot for a suppressor that can fit in the holster. That suppressor will fit on the barrel of the pistol. This looks like the same pistol and suppressor that was included with Deluxe Snake Eyes. That suppressor will also fit on the Uzi. Finally, we get to the wolf, the original wolf that came with 19. 85 snake eyes timber was just one solid piece of plastic it was not articulated at all this one is highly articulated he has a ball jointed head that can twist and turn and move up and down he's articulated at the neck and at the midsection and at the tail he has one two three four points of articulation on each leg even his paws move equally impressive articulation on the back limbs so there are many options for poses the sculpting and coloration on the wolf is very realistic very nicely done very realistic looking fur. On his face he has some scars, perhaps from a fight with a bear. He also has an alternative face, so let's pop this one off and try the other one. Here is that other head. It's still well articulated when you pop it on. It's the same face but with an open mouth snarl showing his teeth. Very aggressive looking. Nice paint applications on the teeth and mouth. This face is important if you want to recreate the iconic artwork from version 2 Snake Eyes. Ironically, if you wanted to recreate that Snake 
Eyes artwork, you would not use this Snake Eyes figure. You would use this one because that Snake Eyes had the visor. Sit, boy. Good dog. Let's take a look at the articulation on Snake Eyes. He has pretty standard classified articulation, so great range of motion on the head all the way around, side to side, up and down. More up than down, I've noticed. Upward motion on the shoulder and swivel at the shoulder all the way around. He has a twist at the upper arm, double jointed elbows, a little loose on my example. He has a twist at the wrist and a hinged wrist, an up and down motion on the left wrist, and a side to side motion on the right wrist. He has a hinge at the rib cage for an ab crunch, but it is hindered by this vest. He has a twist at the torso, split at the hip, a wide split. Good forward motion for the leg at the hip, but not so much backward. He has a twist at the thigh cut. He has double jointed knees. He has a twist at the boot cut, and he has hinged and rocker ankles. Looking at the details of the Snake Eyes, I have to admire it. The head is supposed to be an update of the 1982 Snake Eyes that wore a mask with goggles. It has a sculpted on strap that goes around the back of the head for those goggles. I really like this head. This may be my favorite Snake Eyes classified head so far. His uniform is all black, of course. He has what looks like a knit pattern on the sleeves, and he's wearing a tactical vest. This is a nice upgrade from the simple straps that were on the 1982 figure. On that vest, he has a grenade with a very minor paint application. It looks like a G.I. Joe star with a double zero. Those knee pads were used on Duke. Same knee pads, and it looks like he's using Duke's boots as well, but with different shin guards. The armor on the boots has some scratches and scars, and that's a really nice touch. Overall, I am thrilled to get this Snake Eyes in timber. It is true the Classified series is a bit Snake Eyes heavy. They've given us a lot of Snake Eyes, maybe too many Snake Eyes, but they had to do a classic Commando Snake Eyes, and here it is. It's done pretty well. The updated timber is also really well done. I am happy to see timber in this line. Snake Eyes is forever connected with the wolf. That was my review of the G.I. Joe classified Snake Eyes and Timber Alpha Commandos. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you again to Ryan Sweeney for sending it to me. I'll be back every Friday for a G.I. Joe classified toy review. My main thing on this channel is still vintage G.I. Joe toy reviews. I have a huge back catalog. Make sure you check those out and subscribe for more. I can be found on social media on Facebook and Twitter and I have a website htc788.com. Please support me on Patreon so I can continue to do these reviews. Your name could be in a video. I'll be back soon with more modern and vintage toy reviews. Until then, remember only G.I. Joe is G.I. Joe.